What up, y'all? Is it going? Is it going? Is it going? What up, y'all? So, uh, Tim Pool had a podcast recently with uh, a bunch of fools. <coughs> Luke Gradowski, who I've worked for, Alex Jones, Joe Rogan was on for a bit. Um, they were all in Tim Pool's RV. Um, Michael Malice. Michael Malice. Uh, and a couple other people. <clears throat> anyway, we're going to watch it. Yeah, let's check it out. Let's see what's going on. This is regular internet. I am breaking the internet. Everyone needs to share this link now. Yeah. So we were watching this. We watched it at a point. Point two five. We we sped it up a little bit. <laughs> Michael Malice looks like a young, like he could be Stallone's little brother or something. Oh yeah, I see that. I see that. Oh, how did the dog bite you? Tim Pool's head must smell really bad all the time. <laughs> He's always wearing that. Always hoodie. wearing a beanie yeah. in the middle of the summer. Beanie, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it's just like he's unrecognizable without his beanie. Probably, because it's like a part of his look. thing. So, Joe Rogan in the house. Alex Jones, ladies and gentlemen, right about basically everything. <laughs> Finally, it's all coming down. The truth is coming out. So Thomas Jefferson <laughs> was in the Illuminati. Bunch of demons. Joe Rogan is the 46th president of the United States. I smell sulfur. Oh my God. Oh my God. So Joe's being a lot nicer to <clears throat> Alex than his last podcast with yeah, him. He was he being a dick on. to him. He was... People are just giving us money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's how it works, Tim. I'm, I'm, I'm all so I saw, so I thought, <clears throat> I saw that uh, some somebody posted that clip out of context and was like, look at these guys admitting that they're just, like, doing this for money. Oh, just You know, like, like but what he was talking about was super chats were coming in with donations, and they weren't even really talking anything yet. And he was just kind of laughing that they're just kind of dicking around and there's, like, money coming in. Yeah. He Especially, wasn't saying, oh, we're just fooling people for money. You know, yeah. Like, once Alex and Joe start screaming, Alex and Joe start screaming, then it's like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. It's, it's like, pretty funny. Like, <laughs> it's getting it's hot in here. Listen, it's kind of exciting. It I like it. Let, let Joe it, talk. Isn't it kind of exciting, though? Like, obviously, the world has gone completely into chaos. Yes. Isn't it great? Like, we are in this weird position where the mainstream media is almost universally accepted as at least being mostly full of shit. Mm -hmm. Or partly full of shit. Totally right? full of crap. Some, the most, the most <laughs> optimistic person says, well, they lie sometimes. Right? That was never the case with Walter Cronkite. Exactly. Who well, also lied all the time. Or was it? He lied all the time, but people lit, didn't realize, didn't realize, didn't realize it. it. They it. lie like a crackhead hitting on a crack rock. Alex, every <laughs> word they say is a lie, including and and the. Yeah. It's reached new levels of lying, though. No, no, we've reached new levels of being able to expose them. They were lied us into the Spanish War in, uh, in yeah, Cuba a hundred years ago. Nothing's changed. That's the truth, right? Rosebud. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Gulf of Tonkin, Operation North. It's Lord. always been lies. It's always Mass been lies. Right. This is the way they do this. <laughs> the New York Times refused yeah, yeah, to report yeah. that Germany was targeting Jews. Oh, exactly. Really? So, yes, yeah. because that would be buying into identity politics at the time, because Jews were white, and that's what Hitler said, Jews weren't white. And the government so were, knew about it, and they covered it up, yes. including the railroads, which they could have stopped, but they decided not yes, to. there's oh, a yeah. book called so, Buried... Hold on, let me just make one point. There's a book called Buried by the Times, look it up, yep. and this was how they covered it up, because they didn't want to buy into what Hitler was saying. How are we, how, like, how is it now different, you know, if they've been... I, I think they've been lying the whole time, yes. but how are we now figuring it out? Well, right? I'll tell you what's about to happen. They're devaluing the currency on purpose to crash all the world of currencies <laughs> and bring out the Great Reset. Reset. That's not what we're talking about, Alex. <laughs> no, we this is the Build Back Better agenda, Malice. No, you're asking Malice you why it's happening. How to do this. No, why, why it's this. more obvious. When a guy starts talking, you don't talk over him. Yes. That's how. <laughs> Says really Joe joke? Rogan, yeah. the king of talking over people. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. So it's pretty funny, Joe. Joe's whole body language and like. It's I like it's almost like Joe knows he's not really on the level that this group is on. Um, he's just like kind of like 
it's just kind of weird how he's acting. He's making lots of faces, and you could tell he doesn't agree with a lot of the things that the guys are saying, which is kind of funny. But they kind of let him take the take the reins in the beginning because he's only allowed to be, or he's got to be somewhere in an hour, and this is like a three-hour podcast or something. So, um, do we have yes, a punch? Alex. Do we have a conch? Yes, we need a conch, a conch to pass around. <laughs> Let him talk. A conch. Go ahead, Alex. Tell us. <laughs> no, it's, it's listen. It's the Great Reset. It's the Great Reset. Resetwars.com. The point is, is this the Great Reset? And they're plunging the world economy on by design to consolidate control and kill all the major currencies. That's why there's inflation. That's why there's supply chain breakdowns. I'm just telling you tomorrow's news today. There is a global destruction of the supply chain and the world currencies to bring in a new world currency based on the vaccine passport. The yeah. issue, what they were asking is, you know, has, it, has the corporate press gotten worse? And my point is, we have more mechanisms to expose their depravity and malfeasance in real time. For example... Notice they call it corporate <coughs> news. Yeah, corporate media, corporate press. Not <laughs> mainstream news like I would call it. They call it corporate because they are now mainstream the with their mainstream. numbers the numbers these guys i mean this this got 1.5 million views he said at one point he yeah. had 140,000 people listening at one time where cnn can't get 80,000 people in a day yeah. I think um, that's more than fox news yeah like, that's so they've mainstream. become mainstream so news they can't, but they know they can't use that word anymore so it's corporate, corporate. And i think at some point you may hear it like one of them lets it slip and says mainstream news and someone else, I forget who, yeah. corrects them. They're like, no, no, corporate. Like, they, they know better. It's funny. Years ago, they would have been in a position not to let this Carl Rittenhouse video ever, anyone would ever see it. Yep. Now, if you have some kind of hack journalist with his cameraman, one's wearing a mask, one's not, everyone has got a phone, and all it takes is one person to film it, put on Twitter or Facebook, and then immediately everyone can see it in real time. Michael, I totally I hold, agree on. with you. Just say this nicely. Everybody's right. I, I'm obnoxious and I'm horrible and I apologize. No, that's not what the, the meme no, but is. I don't, but I should, the but meme Michael, is that you're right. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I'll send you the meme. I, no, I've said, I know, I'm saying you. Malice is trying to talk about how the establishment media is dead. I'm talking about how the establishment's hitting us economically. So he's it. making a legitimate point. I'm making a separate point about yeah. the, the, the progenitor of the problems we have. Yeah. I yeah. think you guys are both true. There is a global awakening. But there's also a drastic escalation when it comes to the Great Reset, the Build Back Better agenda, what Klaus Schwab is having wet dreams about when it comes in to enslaving humanity, making people live in pods, making people eat bugs, having them as little... <coughs> oh my like, God. Like, but they're not going... That's because they're yeah. not going down without a fight. So exactly. once the mask is off, you better get whatever... Okay. But we win the fight quicker, we know who they are. Uh, look at yes. that meme. Yeah. Turn me up. Make that larger. Make that meme larger. Look at that shit. Well, Your TV's fine, and you check. Well, Elite cabal of sex traffickers, check. They're turning the frogs gay. Check. Yeah. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's from Africa, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bohemian Grove, check. Silver iodide, not what really sure. Uh, rich people using baby blood. I'm not. That's true. No, it's, it's happening down in Mexico right now. No, it is. Is it really? Yes, it is. Disgust. People are, are doing that. Yep. You are here, human monkey chimeras, oh, which he predicted a long time ago. But where's that? Where's that? Where's the? Monkey? Wait, you're saying the elves aren't real? That's no, the. No, that's, that's next. Well, the elves it's are like, real. This is what of course they're real. So, <laughs> in so, so, so. Joe brings a meme that kind of takes Alex Jones down a notch. <laughs> yeah. Right. Which Joe is always trying to do, it seems like. Have you watched your earlier comedy? I don't think I've been, oh. <laughs> Probably not. Maybe. Watch your okay, I remember in like 1999, I just met Joe before, like, gone to dinner with him and like this producer I know. And, and then I go to see him at the, at the Cap City Comedy Club, now defunct. And he goes up and he goes, let me tell you what's going to kill the corporate media in Hollywood and everybody. It's going to be the internet. It was the first yes. guy I heard say this. 100%. He goes, there's no way they can compete with the internet. He did this whole freaking rant and it was all true. And then he went on to say, but the sucky part about technology is, is they claim we all these jets and suits and jet packs and all yeah. this incredible stuff, but Hold instead on. your cell phone craps out when you're behind a bush. Yeah. Right. The this problem, is, like, this is like, uh, you ever see that? Yeah, it's old Joe. Like, you know, first you laugh. Yeah. He's like, I was high when I said that. <laughs> Same answer. Yeah. See, yeah. Like, yeah. got it, Cop got out. it. Yeah. There you go, man. I feel like corporate it. media is no longer NBC, ABC. Now it's Google. And oh, Alphabet. of course. Yeah. Yeah. When I was working for Luke, I guess 2015 is when all the uh, <clears throat> budding independent media outlets uh, got the phone call 
mm. and and Rogan and Alex Jones. You know, they got the phone call that things weren't going to be the same anymore, and that if they wanted to keep their careers, that they were going to keep quiet about a certain amount of things. And, and that was that was the original purge that happened. The the more there's been a few purges of. Um, you know, of indie media and stuff off of all these platforms. But the original one was a phone call warning, basically. Um, and I watched Luke get it, you know, and all of a sudden people had money, you know. Really? Like all these indie media, you know, all of a sudden they had money to do things. And all of a sudden everyone was trying to do bigger things. You know, Luke had some story where he told me that someone had hacked in somewhere and shown and showed our donation button to like millions of people and some hacker had gotten us like a bunch of money donated yeah it was what? a really goofy story um because all because he, he was super broke right and then all of a sudden he had money <laughs> and like i was like where the hell did you get this money from he's like oh and it was at the time that everyone got the phone calls yeah so there was some, you know, I don't know whether it was threats or simply just cash that made everyone change. But then when everyone didn't follow the orders, that's when the original purge happened. When, you know, anti-media and free thought project, you know, everyone got taken down. Alex got taken down um, because I think they ignored the phone call or some people ignored the phone call. Uh, Luke didn't ignore the phone <clears throat> call. Luke's done quite well since the phone call uh, and that's when he got that mystery airline ticket where he could fly anywhere in the world for free uh. at any like whenever he wanted basically I was like that's interesting someone just donated that to you <laughs> was that what the story was yeah was yeah oh, okay Luke's got huh. some funny stories <laughs> Facebook yeah. It's well, in a, in a way, it's what, worse. What, 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 Facebook what, what, is what, what, worse than ABC. It all needs to be decentralized. It needs to be decentralized. Yes, yes sir. Absolutely. It needs to be decentralized, uh, open communication, where people need to find out what the fuck is really going on. We're, we're finding that through all these corporate, com all these like internet companies, whether it's Google or whether it's Facebook or Instagram. If they can just censor you based on ideology. He says that, but then he's working for you know he's on like satellite radio now. It's on Spotify. Well, yeah, where he's like censored <laughs> like quite yeah. a bit i mean there's either we've watched yeah he's caught he's caught he's, himself before like he'll catch himself said, all, yeah. and like he'll go back on things now because he realizes oh shit i'm on spotify um so a little bit of like projection here <laughs> yeah it's like, like it's, it's, it's just what he it's says, one like, you know it's one thing to say it but it's like you're not living at all yeah. in your life um you went from youtube to a more um, you know, corporate. <coughs> corporate. Now you have a partner who can give you shit or censor you. Or you, you didn't feel before. like you need to self-censor. Yeah, self-censoring. Like he's self sure. self-censors because because he it's on can't Spotify. get Spotify sued, yeah. or else he'll be in trouble. And then you don't have freedom of speech because they're the primary. Yeah, it's like he's always talking about this, but he's the one who's being censored the most and having to self-censor. Okay. So it doesn't seem like he makes the parallel. The connection. Except that there's some sort of utility. It's not a simple <clears throat> private company. When it's literally one of the main two or three ways that human beings share ideas across the planet fucking Earth, it's bigger than just a company. And, and I don't know what the solution to that is, but we have to have that conversation. Free the software. Yeah, right I mean, now, I'm not having that yeah. conversation. They're abusing because, their power. Right, be because the way it, it censors is always in favor of the left. And the people on the left think that's See, a good like, idea. We know all this okay. stuff. This is really just, like entry level <laughs> shit. But since he's salary. saying it, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, Joe, exactly. You know, like, we all know this. And it's kind of like a. <clears throat> like when, when Elon Musk interviewed, he's always like talking about shit. Like we already know about AI and that it might be bad, dude. <laughs> you know, like we already understand. You know, like he's just rehashing this stuff well, that's like kind of el kind of elementary. It is, <clears throat> and it is a uh, more conservative leaning viewpoints because of the people he's surrounded by right now. Conservative, yeah. freedom leaning 
you know, watch him with on you know on well, his he's show like with surrounded the by a that's bunch a of lefties yeah. right now. He'd be completely saying different things. Yeah, the whole all the rhetoric would be much different. He's very wishy washy, so yeah. it's just fun hearing him. And that's say a form these of things. censorship, or it's a form of it's just you know. It's not you know genuine. You're not being yourself. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah, you're being not, someone else, yeah, which yeah. is you're hiding, and that's kind of self censoring. You're not coming from an actually principled place at all. Yeah. yeah, it's just. But but you can see by his body language and his facial expressions that he doesn't agree with a lot of the things that everyone says um, which is funny yeah, yeah. Actually, you can't be left but he but since there are so many of them and these guys are pretty smart dudes or at least like pretty well spoken he knows he can't really like you know yeah it's a there's a lot of dudes in this room more than on his podcast where he's, like he's him the and leader, someone and he you can know. they're in his his territory yeah and, he's not in his territory exactly yeah, yeah. it's just gonna keep going it's gonna it's a machine it's pac-man it's just wait can i wait 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 wait, wait, wait. I, gotta, I gotta ask yo um so uh, a couple of years ago you had jack dorsey on your show you got a bunch of dislikes on the video we ended up talking. You ended up inviting me out, and I don't you know. Destroyed it. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not about that. I want. I wanted to ask you, like, how do you feel your opinion has changed since before we did that That's show and well, to where we're at today? There's a lot of things that have opened my eyes, like slowly but surely, like seeing examples of people censored, and some of them that don't make any sense at all. Like one of the one of the best ones was Brett Weinstein and his whole. Um, this whole Unity Party. Yeah. That they, yeah. when when that got censored, I was like, okay. You guys banned an account for no reason because you thought that that account, which is by a bunch of influential, pe influential uh, intellectuals, was going to somehow or another take votes away from what you thought yeah, was yeah. the party that should win, and so you just banned the account. So now you're making like these ideological choices about free speech. So you're saying your free speech is not as important as the result that I want, and so you're going to ban people. And I, when I saw that, I was like, this is wild. This is fucking wild. And then I talked to a lot of people that were uh, the Second Amendment advocates. They were saying before the election, they were going back into their Instagrams and their Facebooks and finding posts from eight, nine years ago and, and banning them for those posts. Yeah. That they were going Jeez. deep. Yeah, they so, were doing that. Just, I feel stuff it. We know. Yeah, and it's... What it also is, it's, it's the uh, Facebook whistleblowers. It's the, uh, the government takeover of Facebook. Um, he's, it's, that's the topic he's trying to push is this like, oh, well, you know, um, you know, free speech is getting stomped on on Facebook, which it is, so we need the government to, to, to take it over to stop that. But then if the government takes over Facebook, which we already know it's CIA, um, if the government then takes it over, then they can spy even more on us. Um, because of whatever, you know, there's this, you don't know the repercussions of um, giving or allowing the government to take over Facebook, even though right. we know the government started Facebook. Specifically because they... But that whole Facebook whistleblower story, all that stuff, it's all made up CIA garbage. And, and this is the whole, this is the, the outcome that they want is that they want the people to demand government take over Facebook. Or, and then they could at least be like open about the fact that the government's taking over Facebook. Didn't want... And that go, coincides with all this meta, whatever, they're changing the name of Facebook. It's like, it's all the same story. And it's funny that Joe's the one pushing it because it's like, we all know about this stuff. But he's only talking about it because he's supposed to be pushing this idea um, because he's a rabble rouser, you know, for, for the powers that be. Influencing the vote in any way, a thousand here, a hundred there, like if they could just chip away through all these different angles. Like and, this is, and, and, and let's just briefly yeah. look at that. Imagine, it's one thing for a, uh, an orthodoxy to take over and make you comply, but to punish you before it took over is thought crime before i mean this is mind control this is yeah. this is this is like in science fiction this was never dreamed of where you're punished for behavior before the new orthodoxy comes in so you don't just submit in the current state you're going to pay for not 
adopting it before wait, it wait, was the new religion. Alice, i got to correct you. This isn't not science fiction. This is what they did in the Soviet Union, where if you were on the wrong side before Stalin took over, you were executed with your family. Yeah, but so this has historical precedent. No, I know. It's the my family was literally tortured. Yeah. Yeah. There we go with Luke's family. The government, or not having the proper paperwork when, during a random passport check. No, 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 I think, no, no, no. I know Tyrants do that, Luke. Luke, I know Tyrants do that. What is it? It's, 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 it's retroactive Jackson. enforcement. Yes. Retroactive. They cut his fucking nose in Chinatown. Oh, let me, let me, I, let me, let me, I want to, I want to counter this though, because we were, we were actually heading in a direction of this conversation. We were talking about how we're actually starting to realize how, how deceptive the media is. And then I pointed it over starting to Drew because to starting? he's saying, bro, <laughs> this is so, a cult shit. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a cult. Yes. Tell us, Joe. Tell us, Joe. Tell us, Joe. Speak to us, And, like, Peter. everyone's reacting to him saying this stuff because they're excited that he's saying it because we know it, you know? And these yeah. guys are... These guys know it, too. Um, these are... I mean, these aren't people I look to for information, but these are some of the better podcasters. They get a lot of views. They get a lot of views. They put themselves out there also as the face of things. Like, you know, um, Michael Malice, I know. Malice calls himself himself an anarchist anarchist several times in this and wrote this anarchist book. And, but then he says some pretty funny stuff, um, that doesn't sound anarchist at all in this. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to see all these guys talk. But at the end of the day, react. it's a bunch of statists talking about status stuff still. You know, it's yeah. not it's not any true anarchists or true libertarians. These guys, and like what I was saying earlier about the phone call, when Luke got the phone call, mm. you know, he had to talk to me about how we were going to change things. And I was just like, this isn't, you know, like, he wanted to go after the bigger, bigger art audience, which is the disgruntled conservative, young conservative mm. um, group, which is far bigger than just libertarians and anarchists, which is what my I was only interested in. Um, so I, I was <clears throat> pretty frustrated when. You know, Luke started doing, you know, he started reading the news more instead of doing street videos. And, um, you know, now that's like all he does. And that's, you know, it's he does well with it. But it's just, it's not the the crowd he's, he's speaking to. Um, you know, they're not going in the right direction, in my opinion. Or at least it's not. Yeah. He's not... Uh, you know, it's one thing to uh, to outreach to bigger groups, but he's he's talk showing. You know, they're they're talking about politicians still, as if yeah. politicians are real. Should, you know, as if they're actually the ones with that. power and not the bankers yeah. and not these elites and not the elites of the elites that we don't even know about. Like, um, you know, and and this this podcast at several points spirals into just a bunch of status talking about status shit. Um, talking about how, you know, we need to vote and get the right people in there and all this garbage, <laughs> you know. Hey, shut up, shut up. So it's like, yeah, these, these guys are all right, but at the end of the day, they're still all full of shit. Um, but then you have Joe in there, you know, who's, who's even less on the level is, of these guys as far as, like, their openness and how uh, constrained they are. I know Tim's in his RV doing podcasts, so obviously, you know, he's got his overhead low so he can... Pro- um, so he could take most advantage of working for himself, I guess, or something like that. But, you know. No, we are in a cult. Not, no, start over. This information is not based on reality. This is yes. a left-wing cult. And they're, they're pumping stuff out, and then they're confirming this belief. They're, they're all getting together, and they're ignoring contrary evidence. Yeah, so he's but Joe's a lefty. <clears throat> Joe's yeah. a lefty he's, all the time on yeah, his show. He's, he's, he's always he's lefty. I know Joe as wearing, you know, a Ron Paul shirt. Back in the day. Back yeah. in the day, going on Jay Leno talking about Ron Paul. You know. the moon landing and shit. Yeah, like that's, that's the Joe Rogan <laughs> I like. Uh, this new Joe Rogan no, is like a weird lefty, like he's on Spotify. He's making the big, you know? you know, the big, the big, big bucks. Yeah. And then yeah, depending but on who's on show. But it's dumb because it's like he doesn't even. How much money do you need, dude? You know, like <laughs> why don't you just like go back to how you used to do things and just talk about whatever you want to talk about? Hopefully, he'll do that someday, but I doubt it. Ignoring any narrative that challenges their belief about what happened, and they're not looking at it realistically. They're only looking at it like you would look at it if you're in a fucking cult. Sounds it's like a religion. weird left. It, well, cult is a religion that's just like yeah. it's just yeah. older. No, I, I had a bit like, about it. The, well, like, the cult, cult doesn't cult. let you ask questions. Keep go ahead. Well, <laughs> a cult is made by a guy, and that guy knows it's a cult. In a religion, that guy's dead. 
that's the difference. Like religions are just cults that last longer. You, and you some know, of them that's what government be is worthwhile, like yeah. social and economic and and even uh, moral structures. Like they, they actually benefit society. Like some some cults, they're based on rituals or things that people learn, mm. and they realize this is a better way to live their life. And, but some of them are just based on the present moment of gathering the most amount of whether it, it is uh, influence or finances or w w w power, whatever the fuck it is. That's what this is. This you know what? I left totally left. agree. So let me ask the next question. I really want to hear what you have to say. How, what is the period we're in now? Because it seems like it's coming to an end. This is Kali Yuga, man. This is this is some weird shit that was predicted by the Bhagavad Gita. This is, this is like this. Guru Jalaram, Battle of the Gods, yeah. Ragnarok. Tell, Tell me. The, this is what happens in <laughs> cultures. Like they go through these like these pitches, these ups and downs, and it's almost. Inevitable. So again, <clears throat> they're letting Joe go. Because he's got to leave in a little bit, not because they're all mesmerized yeah. by his conversation. Because this is like, he's wasting everyone's time, really. This is all kind of like... He's just him, he likes the sound of, you know, his he voice. He likes talking, he likes the attention, his... but he's not really saying much. No. <laughs> and whatever he's saying is like kind of obvious shit. Inevitable. Like, it's almost <laughs> impossible for us with our human reward, reward systems that are based on like animal emotions and biology to, ma to manage millions and millions and millions of people all on one continent with money and the economy and the fucking environment. It's almost impossible to do. So it almost always slides into authoritarianism. Yeah. And the best way it slides into authoritarianism is to control the narrative. Yeah. The uh, fourth, yo, the you're, you're going to leave. Keep going, brother. We're, 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 so you say it's almost <laughs> impossible. How would you say Keep going, brother. Mushrooms. Beautifully said. <laughs> <laughs> mushrooms. Well, let me ask that question. we got to love each other. We need mushrooms. we got to realize we're all in this thing together. We can, instead of competing with each other, just do your best and give everybody hugs. I agree. So let's expand on that. No, you don't agree. You're why do hallucinogens? Yeah. Why do hallucinogens taken properly create such peace? Why they? Because they eliminate the ego, and the ego is responsible for most of the conflict. Most of the conflict is instead of thinking, oh, I gotta get this by guy back. Just relax, everybody relax. Everybody like look at this. Like, what does everybody want in terms like of like you forgave me three years ago when I was being a dick? Everybody, dead. and it was so much better. Okay, here everybody. it is. Listen, it was amazing. What does everybody want? Him talking to Luke. You want I good remember friends. you were asking earlier. You want yeah, he safe. Just said it. You want your, so your children to go to good schools. You want your drinking. loved ones to be protected. Mm -hmm. You want people to get by and have a good life for as long as they possibly can. That's what everybody wants. But you no, think that other not. people are trying to no, stop you not. from having that. I, other yeah. people are trying to stop you from having that. As a few sociopaths, they want to gather it all up yeah, for themselves. There you go. I forgive small you amounts of people. The service now realizing, wait a minute, when the government, the Eye of Sauron, has you in, your, in their sights, yeah. they're going to do whatever they can. I've been experiencing that. The, the, where, like, they just Alex, lie about what everything. What were you just saying <laughs> about not interrupting? <laughs> Malice. I was just, <laughs> just the one point is people don't have, have malice for me. I don't have a lot of love for you. I know, but I, start over. <laughs> I'm not going to start over. I'm just going to say my one sentence, which is conservatives now realizing when the government, which is the eye of Sauron, has it, you in their sights, they're going to do whatever they can to break you. And this is something that disproportionately hurts poor people. And the left has been arguing about that for a long time, that's, and they were right. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's inarguable, right? Yes. It was 20 no, something's happening. You see the Titanic. You see the iceberg. You're like, holy cow, the ship is heading somewhere. But at the end of the day, we can still decide where it goes. And I think, to Joe's point, mushrooms, decentralization are way... Funny for Luke to use an analogy about a PSYOP. Can we yeah. talk about DMT while Joe's here yes. because he's giving me DMT next week? I am. Or should I no. not say it? No. Don't want to no. hear we Joe Rogan talk about it. Going down south, sorry. <laughs> no, bitch. Oh, I'm so in. <laughs> I was arguing with someone about the Rittenhouse trial right now, a friend of mine who's on the left who said, I don't understand how you're defending this kid. And when I said like a few, a, 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 a few key details about the case, they said, I didn't hear that. And then they responded, to be honest, I was kind of just listening in the background while I was yeah, at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all yeah. crazy, right? Like, should he have just showed up with an AR-15 at this protest? Like, why is he there? Like, why? He's a 17-year-old kid with a fucking... But then you learned his dad lived right. there. Then you learned his dad lived right. there. Then you learned that his family had a store there, right? Yeah. Oh, worked right. there. Didn't his, his dad, family work his there? Dad, his dad, dad had a business and his business. His, his dad, dad, his dad, grandma, his yeah. cousins. He yeah. worked there, his best well, friend. That was his hometown. His but, mom had left. But right. how wild are these fucking people? This is like wild and wonderful whites of West Virginia. They said, son, load up your AR-15. You want to drive me to the protest? 
You're 17. Like, to take a 17-year-old kid to the middle of a fucking protest with a load no, of... No, I agree. It wasn't okay. a protest. It's, it was a riot. It was a I violent understand. riot. It's a, okay, let's say it's a riot. But Sorry. before it's it happened, it was a protest. But he shouldn't Still, have been there, but no one If you have children, is anybody here besides me and Alex have children? Negative. When no. you have kids, the last thing you want to tell your 17-year-olds, hey, son, I'm going to take you down to that riot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my, my son's bigger than me. And he's gonna pop off some cash. He said, "I'm going to ride right. that big ass ass for you." Right. That's wild shit. Like I'm not. I'm just not a judgment call. I'm saying it's a very unusual move. Wait. Luke's really concerned about the mic covering up his face. This whole video, he he does not stop messing with this microphone because. It's in the view <laughs> of the camera hitting him directly. I have a lap to on. drive your 17-year-old like kid across yeah. the state line. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I like Rick well, the House, but they're on. a little weird. That's wait, 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 wait. wait. State, but he doesn't deserve to go president. The state line thing is too much. 31 miles. Yeah, but it's still state line, right? I, I get but it. But state no. is shit. Oh, hold, 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 hold on. Here's why it's much. Do you know the law? There's a law when it comes to, like, firearms, when yep. it comes There's a law! <laughs> No, oh, how joke, status joke. So like you, do, it's like state he didn't bring a gun, he didn't bring a gun across state. Okay, the state exactly. lines are real. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. <laughs> state lines are real things. Look at this is real. reality changes when you cross them. <laughs> you live in one place and you go to another place specifically for this reason. The prosecutors... See, like, uh, what's his ass? Other dude. Malice should be losing his mind right now. Yeah, He's calling anarchist. himself an anarchist. Come on! Step in! Where it's are funny, you? It's funny, because Luke jumps in for anarchy more than yeah, freaking Malice does, surprised. even. Lawmakers or whoever's going to look at it very differently. Just because you're crossing a state line. That's just fact. It's like, like you're invading. You that being said... Right, if you that, do something inside of Kansas, that's inside of Kansas. If you that, decide to cross over into another place, it becomes a different thing. Right? That being said, the there are people who may have been places a different like thing. Buffalo and Detroit who, and, exactly. and yes. Mexico who have enhanced IDs who are able to go back and forth as if it's Is not. that what he had? Well, he lived like a mile from the border. It's a veteran and, community. And Kenosha was, it, it's the suburb but of Kenosha. The, but what a lot of people are missing is he went across the border and then got a gun. Yeah, what a lot of people are missing is, is that none of this shit matters. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, he didn't right. cross the border with the Truly. gun. Right. So he went across the border and then he got a gun. And also, he's not even 18. It's, it's kind of wild. Like, Yes, because <laughs> if he was a day into being 18, it would be completely be different. Because borders are a real thing. If you think about an actual 17-year-old boy, <laughs> they're boys. He's more of a man than any of those police officers. He did a very good job. You uh, son of a bitch with your fucking cut nose. <laughs> and, but at the same Jack time. Jack Nicholson but, yeah. in Chinatown, they cut his nose, but, but talked too much shit. But I think this is the kind of pivotal point that a lot of people, especially the corporate media, are focusing on because this is the argument that they want to make to this arm. Well, I'll go back to they're not showing the defense arguments on a lot of TV channels. That, yeah. that discredits him right there. But let me ask Joe before he's got to go here. He's got, he's got to go to a comedy show tonight. Let me ask Joe his, his view shifting gears on the political correct wars. Oh, but hold on, hold on. Keep talking about this because this is well, an important fine. thing to like expand on what we're talking about here. Like this is not, it, Here's the problem. Here's the big problem. Why did he have to do that? He was well, but Hold on. Why oh, did he boy. have to do yeah. that? Why, Why did the police he stand no, up? No, 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 no. What, what compelled him to do that? Because Long there was anarchy. anarchy. Because there was chaos in the street because they were allowing... Anarchy. Him. Oh, boy. What compelled him to do that? Anarchy. And you can see no. Luke. Luke's like, because mm, even Luke knows, you know, like the proper, he knows the proper definition of anarchy. And Joe starts spitting it out for... Chaos, basically. Yeah. Correct. The reason why you see Luke trying to jump in on <laughs> <laughs> doing to tell the kid, hey, this is a good idea to get your fucking loaded gun, and uh, we're, we're gonna like is because civilizations collapse. Right. right. Finally, go hell let's have a war. Not this not This wasn't. Right. This wasn't well, it was a meme I saw. We'd be we'd be British still if seventeen year olds didn't grab rifles every once in a while. <laughs> hey, this is a good idea. To get your fucking loaded gun, and uh, we're, we're gonna like is because civilizations collapse. Right. right. Finally, go hell with the war. I think Luke just grabbed his pen to write the note. It's not because he, right. he's this like, this was an anarchy. This was yes, state here you go. mainstream media promoted chaos. Come on, that mostly mostly bailing out some Malahara. Clearly bailing them out, clearly clearly bailing them out right, with right, big right. tech social media promoting these protests. Yeah, see, Luke, good on him, but. Joe's oh, like, like detailed instructions yeah. on exactly what to do. They're Antifa people, right? They're wild motherfuckers that have... Yeah, right. Joe's clueless. That statement right there. 
shows how much he he's clueless on this subject. Pedophiles. They are getting it's it's off. They're organized. They're, 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 nobody's nobody's yeah. controlling these these yeah. riots at all. They're not Whatever influencing the them. So Joe, what happens when he's found not guilty? I predict when, that. But when they're telling him, do you think someone's telling him to attack this kid? No, hold on, hold on. No, yeah. no he's just not. Well, they were telling him to attack that, that, that actually, car. Hold on, I can actually answer this. He spent his whole life. So uh, there's so something important. Yeah. A lot of conservatives don't understand about the, uh -huh. the, these 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 wealthy billionaires who fund these nonprofits. There will be two people from an organization that is funded. They come down to events, and they know there's a lot of angry people who have no idea what's going on. They don't, they don't say to them, hey, go attack that kid. They just say things like, if anyone tries to stop them, don't let them. Respect the diversity of tactics. It's a very common phrase. It means if someone is committing acts of violence, let them do it. And that's bad. And they have strategies. They call themselves often facilitators. Yep. They will come down to a riot and then guide the, the, the destruction in certain ways and try and take that, 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 the violence and use it. We got secret Antifa documents five years ago where they, even in Democrat areas, are working with the police and the government, and they have targets they're going to burn, things they're going to yeah. hit. It's all they're not only that, but there's been, say, there's been, in some yeah. ways, it's a rhetorical question. What I'm saying is, why did he have to do that? Wait, why well, did he have to do that? Because everything was falling. Right, right. Joe, Joe acting drunk. I had Joe 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 Can I just say one sentence? Yes, yeah. I had Robert Barnes on my show this week. He worked for the defense team. And my understanding, according to Robert, Robert is, uh, the people who r ran uh, that Homie got bit on the face by a dog, if you're wondering. Car dealership. Yeah, Michael Malice. Paul, Kyle, and several, several other that? people, because that car dealership had been hit night after night. So they were specifically uh, called in to defend this location. There's see, that's the funniest thing about this whole thing, is that, that these guys don't even really have all the facts on what happened, and Joe sounds like he has the least amount of facts of all of them, <laughs> and that's kind of like... What they're complaining about the whole time is that no one really, they're like blaming it on, they're like, oh, the leftists don't even know what's going on, but they hardly know what the, what's going on, too. Yeah. It's four locations that they circled around. Which people them. are allowed to defend yeah. their property. Yes, of course. Especially right. when the police just say we, we refuse to do anything. So, I Joe, to answer go ahead, your rhetorical question. People forget how bad summer 2020 was. Like, I yeah. lived in the middle of Hollywood when it was oh all God. at its peak, and I had to evacuate my home and hide in the woods. <laughs> That's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> She lived in Hollywood and had to evacuate Hollywood? her home into the woods. We were in Hollywood summer 2020. I worked in Hollywood summer 2020. That's bullshit. A lot, like all the businesses boarded up. And there, it's like the L.A., the Hollywood crowd that was rioting was very well behaved. They were yeah. simply protesting. They were stopping some people. We, we were, even got we were stopped. We stopped at an intersection and where they walked out and had some signs. But they, they but they walked back. And driving is you know, a privilege, and it was weird and like you yeah, know, but, but like there was no. Out of L.A. of all places. But she said she had to go to evacuate the Evacuate to go to the woods? What? No, 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 no. To no, the no. valley? Calm like, down. no. It's, she's <laughs> way overdoing yeah, it. that's a little... Um, we went down... We were, like, on... Holly, we were on Sunset one day at the peak of all this. And there was, like, maybe 50 people protesting. But the entire like 60 miles of Sunset Boulevard was closed down and everything was boarded up but there was yeah. hardly anyone and they were super well behaved you definitely didn't need to evacuate Hollywood yeah, <laughs> yeah. stay there for like two weeks until it was wow. somewhat safe to go back oh my god yeah like, that's the key two weeks two more. weeks till it was somewhat safe more of that there wasn't more call ready three dozen people yeah. died I mean, yeah. Joe, you left LA for some crime well, three dozen. Uh, three dozen. Gavin Newsom hates her because she took the California uh, position Kamala. for the presidency away from him. Yeah, oh, so yeah. again, so here we are back to talking about people the and politics. the politicians in American the political yes. freaking reality TV show. Like, these guys know that these people aren't the ones really in power. And this is what irritates me the most. And this is one of the reasons why I stopped working with Luke. Was I was like, dude, I know you know these you people... Know you know better than yeah. that. Why, like how every time you go to Bilderberg, I was like, "What are you doing?" Like, no, it's the same every year. For one, for two, you know these people aren't the ones in power. Like, I know you know that. So, like, what do you have to say about it? And it's just, oh, well, that's where the market is. And it's like, yeah. it's it's bullshit. You know, like these dudes straight for an hour talk about 
politicians and how everyone hates Kamala Harris and then this next and president who's gonna is going to be, president? Who's oh, gonna be the next know, president. Joe Biden. Oh yeah, you know he's crazy, right? It's like, dude, that's so, come on, waste of time. She hates her. Because she's because you hear talking shit. I'm not is that why they cut your nose? No, <laughs> that's fake. That's Giant a false flag. Giant. Be careful, Alex. You don't want to get in trouble with that. <laughs> <laughs> I still think gonna. I, I think they're gonna take Michelle Obama or Oprah. Twenty twenty four. No way. No way. What are they playing? What are you talking about? Over the top. People are like, check, check. The point is, he's degenerating right. and falling it's apart. It's clearly back. something's wrong. So it's not, wait, it's not, not Joe it's Biden. Not fair. It's not, it's like to judge him, it, like in comparison to like judging Obama when he was in office or judging even Trump when he was on, it's not fair. He's got a, a problem. There's something wrong with him. Right? It's not as simple as, I don't like the things he stands for, or the special <laughs> groups that have got him into power, I don't like his politics. That's not what's going on here. This is like, this is a man is it really? who's <laughs> compromised. Something's right? wrong, and he's deteriorating. And either we admit that, and we all admit, we all know it, or we don't admit it. So if we don't admit it, then China just starts fucking filling up Facebook with a mm. bunch of fake pages, and, and we, we have chaos constantly. You know, I mean, that's, that's part so of No one's on Facebook. So anymore. if we don't have a good president, China is going to flood gonna... Facebook with fake profiles, and we're going to have chaos. <laughs> Quote, unquote, Joe, Joe Rogan. Rogan. <laughs> the state is... Blah, blah. Somehow what? Joe Biden is keeping like, China from, yeah. from spamming yeah. Facebook. <laughs> and this is going back into this, like, whole government control of Facebook thing. Like, that's yeah. all he wants to talk about. <clears throat> and um, it's probably what was prepared for him to talk about in this situation. Oh, yeah, talking points. Yeah, you got to keep bringing up this this idea that Facebook needs to be controlled by some outer, some non oh, yeah. non private company. You don't want China you know. flooding with fake profiles. Yeah. yeah. Chaos. Like he's just oh, Anarchy. make sure you say these statements. You know yeah, these these ten yes. statements. Just slip them in there somewhere, and like totally. he'll throw them out, and you're like, what are you even talking about right now? Like, we admit it's very that. unusual. We all admit we all know it, or we don't admit it. So if we don't admit it, then China just we like, all. He's like, you know, you, we we all feel yeah. this way. It's like, well, what are you saying here? Facebook. I don't with a bunch mm. of fake pages, and, and we it. we have chaos. It's not as simple as I don't like the things he stands for or the special interest groups that have got him into power. Um, no, plenty of people don't like him for that, like but yeah. that's playing into <laughs> the like, whole two-party thing again. Compromised. Yeah. Something's wrong, and he's deteriorating. And either we admit that, and we all admit, we all know it, or we don't admit it. So if we don't she admit does, it, it doesn't China even matter. <laughs> that he's deteriorating. Like, yeah. Filling up Facebook. I, Look, with a bunch mm. of fake Do you think it's making him make policy choices that aren't correct? Because, like, articulate deeper than just making these. Yeah. And and we, we have chaos constantly. You know, I mean, that's, that's part of what's going on, like, with the, the, the conversations that people are having online. Yeah, nobody respects instigated. us because of him. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's insane. He's the first president. president. No one respects us. us. Ah! Oh. He's the conversation people are having online. Yeah, nobody respects instigated. us because of yeah. him. Right, and it's, it's insane. He's the first insane. president who's literally shitty. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Poopy pants. Michael Malice. <laughs> <you know>, <laughs> give it up for Michael Malice. I think but that's what's what's part of what's happening. You know, it's like we're we are in the cult, and if you're in the cult, you have to pretend that the cult leader's okay. You know, the cult leader's not okay. In fact, if you so see all the Twitter stuff, are opening their mouths. More and more people yeah. going, hey. We gotta do something. And be like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And so they're coming out of this fucking Who are pop. these people that are saying this, Joe? Your comedian you buddies that don't slap. know jack shit about politics? Yeah. Like, who, who are you talking about? And they're going, what about that people to judge guy? Uh, well, who's, who's, who's saying that? This is the first time I've ever heard what this about person. That? Yeah. It's the first time I've heard this person's voice, <laughs> name, in my entire life. Yeah. And Joe Rogan... Uh, uh, surrounded by anarchists is talking about it. Like, Our what? More and more people yeah. going, hey, we gotta do Ooh. something. And be like, oh. us? Okay, okay, okay. And so they're coming out of this fucking fog, and they're People going, don't do anything about anything. And what about that people that just got? The, the who? Like, who? Three Fee. months yeah. off for his fucking kid. Like, that's okay. That's okay. People have short memories. Let's get him back yeah. in here. Boy, what about the meme I sent you today of like the Hollywood guys going, he's a rock star. He's punk rock. I mean, there's still, some are still trying. Oh, that's to... Joe Biden. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Joe yeah. Biden well, Pete Buttigieg yeah. does have intelligence agency connections. See, you got Joe. Um, 
Joe and Luke. So Luke is playing more toward towards Joe's crowd, and Luke all of a sudden reads the news all day. So Luke <laughs> sounds very different than he used to back in the day. Yeah. But he's Luke knows better. Um, I mean, Joe. They they actually they both know better. But it's <laughs> but J Luke is trying to get you know that that. Joe Rogan crowd, that's his, like, his bread and butter right there. So he's yeah. going to uh, talk about the things that Joe wants to be talking about more than, than what Luke should be talking about. So he, he was uh, tried to be as the kind of prop guy. They did try to push him. So I wouldn't be surprised if they try to push him again. Of course. But again, the mainstream media, let's admit this, the mainstream Don't call media, mainstream, Luke. So corporate media put in... There it was. Don't call it mainstream, Luke. ...was uh, tried to be as the kind of prop guy. They did try to push him. So I wouldn't be surprised if they try to push him again. Of course. But again, the mainstream media, let's admit this. See, because... Because, you know, I, I'm of the crowd of calling it mainstream, and so is Luke originally, mm -hmm. but he's, he's trying to branch out, and he's yeah. hanging out with these he's dorks. Like, wait, no, I am mainstream. Yeah. I need to be mainstream. Don't use the word mainstream. Yeah, corporate. and it's like, it's all this, this wishful thinking on their part. Oh, no, we're not mainstream. Or no, we are mainstream, but... Yeah. He was tried to be as the kind of prop guy. They did try to push him, so I wouldn't be surprised if they try to push him again. Of course. But again, the mainstream media, let's admit this, the mainstream media... Don't call media, mainstream, Luke. So Corporate media put Biden. Call the corporate media will be putting in the next president of the United well, States. Well, and gonna Biden try. is the fall guy. I, they're yeah. definitely going to try, but the problem is they don't have like a clear. So they're just going to be talking. Shit. They're just talking about state is talking about state yeah. of shit. None of this is none of this is real. This is all they're talking about the reality show that <clears throat> the reality show with the politicians and and all the stuff that's supposed to distract us from the fact that that we don't have a choice whatsoever. And, um, you know, uh, this is where I completely disconnect from all of these well, people. Oh! This, this is why you can't have this many people on the fucking podcast. Everybody just starts yelling. Okay, let me, let, me, let me correct what Sean Hannity just Joe the pro. Yeah. yeah. He's got to school everyone all the time on all the things he does to people on his show. <laughs> the, the Americans don't care about the Constitution. He looks like Sylvester Stallone, like a little mini Sylvester Stallone. He does, yeah. <laughs> this is just boomer bullcrap that people spout on Fox News. Like put a little red bandana on him and like a, 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 a camo shirt, and it's Rambo. So you think the United States Constitution is boomer bullcrap? Is yes, that what you're I saying? Wow. Yeah. Oh, that dude gets triggered. 100%. Yeah. Wow. If you looked at what Fucking happened, Russian. if you looked Russian. at what happened with the lockdowns, they did not have to use a lot of force. The overwhelming majority of people were more than happy to have their freedoms taken away for the illusion of safety. The average man. Well, the average person is reasonable, and when something comes uh, comes along like like a pandemic. They go along with it for a little bit just to, or at least guaranteed to have people go along with it for a while and, and give the benefit of the doubt to what's going on. People weren't completely, I mean, I don't know. He's trying to, he's trying to make it sound like kind of something that it's not. Yeah. Like, yeah. does not want to be free. He merely wants to be safe. And the you can still believe in the Constitution, believe in your rights, and kind of follow along with these things and, and, and get check them out. Of yeah, you're that's why to... they use the fear of the virus because they didn't just ask people, oh, just stay in your homes for no reason and people complied. Then, yes, yeah. this argument would be correct. But no, let's be real here. People were influenced. And if you're not a serious yes. skeptic who thinks that the, that the, the fake virus or the virus doesn't exist, then, you know, you're going to be like, oh, I should probably, you know, stay safe. And it's, yeah, like, like he's trying to be all, oh, people are going to trade safety where normally I'd, I'd agree. I don't necessarily in this point. This is Keith Oberman. And the, you can say oh, yeah. my name. And the, <laughs> no one's going to know that. <laughs> Joe, place. no one's going to know that reference. And the Constitution has been a dead letter from, from the George Washington administration. They were locking people up for criticizing the government in the 1790s. It's a complete joke. Resetwars.com. <laughs> there is on this. I think the corporate media is now Alphabet, Google, Facebook, yeah. well, Meta. Uh, right. yeah, and yeah. how do we face this in the next 20 but years? If they're smart, what they would do is go back to straight great news. Straight, objective, and just have all the ads A plane you want. crash. Have all the ads you want, but have objective, completely unbiased news. If they did that, I think it would turn it around. If we so knew that... So, he's talking about Facebook. His idea is he thinks if Facebook just... 
if what if they just reported just news like but just did it like good <laughs> basically yeah. and unbiased like like he's planting these ideas that he wants people to have so they're stoked when the government takes over and those are their talking and points and there's some control yeah and it'll the government's like oh, you, oh this we'll, is we'll be able We'll make sure that our fact checkers make sure that everything's unbiased, yeah. you know, which is just more nonsense. There's and that's no what, thing? Like, remember what Joe did to, to fucking Alex Jones last time he was on a show. He sat there and fact checked him the whole time yep. like a douchebag. It was so lame. That everyone that was reading all the news, like the, if we get to a point through all these independent social media applications and the distribution of information when we know what they're saying is verified, we know it's true. So they have to tell the truth. If they just told the truth and give you a synopsis of what's happening in the world, they would actually make more money. What that's, and they would have that's less not polarization. Deep fakes and they would, right, but that's not that's, possible, That's a real Joe. problem. That's a real problem. It's not Deep possible because at the very least they're going to be biased in terms of what they cover and what they don't. Maybe. Or wait, maybe they just get together with a panel that decides like what is the most important in terms of <laughs> national security, the economy, well, all the different things about climate. What are, what are the issues? And then you're leaving it up to a panel, dude. <laughs> Instead of just one person like like you think that's it's uncorruptible to have a panel of people deciding these things like that's that we know are real that we nonsense this is why everyone thinks joe's so smart joe <laughs> memorizes things yeah he's got this like he could remember all these people's names and all these facts and stuff but like his ideas for things aren't very good in an unbiased way if someone came along and did that i guarantee you, you someone would get of people from both sides once it's been clearly established that it's actually unbiased news i think it would be massively <laughs> commercially successful but, 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 that, but what if it's not and what if people don't agree that it's what if that never happens like look at the irony and they do it by showing all sides like here now, was this person that person. let's take a look at breaking points with crystal and sagar 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 perfect sorry. example but no they're getting smeared as alt-right and far-right now by who bunch that, of pussies who wants to sure, listen yeah, Tim, you about about stop, stop, stop. but their audience keeps I'm growing that's that, that's true but if you're, if, if, huge. If, there's a there's an issue with this this uh, idea of the left populists and the right populists yeah, can come yeah, challenge yeah. the elites. Yeah. Crystal Next and Cigar were, were soccer, this, is, soccer. this is funny because Joe I don't know who he's talking about, whatever, but Joe gets real pissed because I guess this dude whose name he's mis the who's Tim Tim whose name he's mispronouncing Joe's friend's name and he gets real pissed. And he's all <laughs> piece of shit. Say say his name one more time. Soccer! 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 <laughs> 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 AJ to the rest. So uh, we did a segment on the show. And so Joe leaves. One quick question. Given that all guns... And the dynamic completely changes. Yeah, it's interesting <laughs> to see how this the Second Amendment. podcast changes. Uh, what do you think of police officers that arrest people who have guns uh, that might be in violation of the Second Amendment or otherwise peaceful people? Repeat it one more time. Police who enforce gun laws, which are all unconstitutional against peaceful citizens. What do you think of those police? And speak more into the mic. Your audio is a little low. Is my audio low? Yeah. 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 I, oh, sorry about that. I just think that police, I think the biggest issue right now with police officers, and I've talked to many of them, I've had conversations with them, I think a lot of them are really like illiterate to the law. Oh, so this guy must be kind of pro-cop. And what's the guy's name? Malice? Mm -hmm. He's like, act, his, his character is the sassy anarchist, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not all of them. So I think he's trying to bust him because he's kind of like pro-cop. He's probably the, like the least politically like in line with everyone else, from what it sounds. But every time you talk to one of them, like they're really not sure how they're enforcing the law correctly. Like they're not even aware of some of the laws themselves. Like you, you're just you know, completely know. ignoring my question. Yeah, uh, <laughs> laws are all unconstitutional. What do you think of police officers who enforce gun laws against peaceful citizens? I think uh, the Second Amendment is for all Americans. Right. So, what do you think? Again, for the third time, what do you think of police officers who enforce gun laws against peaceful citizens? I think that's just something they're going to have to decide to do whether they're going to do it or not. Well, what do you think of them? That's what I think. That they're just going to have to just, you're just going to shrug your shoulders. So they're if a cop arrests a decision. So if a cop arrests someone who has a handgun illegally, who's not hurting anybody or has a, some kind of red flag thing, what do you think of that police officer who puts that person in jail? Yeah, I don't think that's a good thing. But what do you think of that individual? The individual? The, the individual police officer, yeah. That's what I just said, yeah. They're evil. 
Are they, yeah, but you said that's not a good thing. You know, me burning a cake is not a good thing as well. Yeah, like, well, the, the, the human thing. being, same, his, 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 his name is Officer You're John. You're the same question over and over. Officer John well, you're Smith. You're not answering it. Also not. Hold on, let me, let, me phrase, let me phrase the question. There was a woman, I tell the story all the time, mm -hmm. who was from Pennsylvania with a legal gun and drove into New Jersey. Right. And we'll give the cop a name, Officer John Smith. Mm -hmm. Pulled her over. And he said, you know, your tail lights out or whatever. And she, he said, do you have a weapon on you? He said, yes, I, I do. And he says, oh, okay. She politely informed him, but in New Jersey, you can't have it. So he took her out, he cuffed her, and they tried putting her in prison for four years. How do you feel about John Smith? I mean, I, I would have to really take a look at the wow. entire situation. Yeah. Hey, well, another thing I'm not trying to avoid is anything else I want to say. A lot of the decent cops are leaving because no, of the vax. No, there's no decent cops. Well, I was just going to make a correction and say no, that. I, I, I think there are none, but... Good meaning cops, a lot of them are leaving. I just, I, I, of the vax. Right, you're right. That's and true. I, and, and I disagree with Michael on that. I think there are decent cops, but I understand <laughs> your point about the institution as a whole. That had nothing to do with but anything I, they I, were talking about. There are, I, I've, I've met cops who have been. They, they've actually sought to like stop violent criminals sure. and, and rapists and murderers. No question. And, and I've seen these cops be like, I'm not going to stop some kid for you know this, that, or otherwise. I will also correct you. You said all gun laws are un unconstitutional. Yes. What if the gun law was that you had to have a gun? Well, that actually was the case in America, the colonial period. And yeah. I, if you look it up, I have an article in Welcome The back. Observer that says must pack heat, ar arguing for using Obamacare as a mechanism to mandate gun ownership. Criminals aren't going to follow the laws anyways. Well, no, so we're talking about... <laughs> Alex, what shut if, up. Uh, Michael had said all gun laws are unconstitutional. My question is, what if a gun law mandated you do own a gun? Like, uh, that's unconstitutional. It is unconstitutional? It's not unconstitutional. Switzerland makes you do it. I don't that's know, a I form don't... of indentured servitude. Well, hold on, hold on. I don't know. Owning a gun is of indentured servitude? No, if you make somebody own a gun, that's indentured servitude. It's, who are you a servitude, who are you in servitude to who? Who's the state. The state, yeah, Whoever, the whoever state mandated you, you to carry it so, and yeah, to use it. He's trying to argue that And it's, he's the anarchist. Yeah, <laughs> that it's not unconstitutional if the government were to force everyone Any to Any mandate armed. is against anarchy. And this guy, like, doesn't get that. And yeah. he's trying to bust Alex. And Alex is like, ah, uh, you confused? Ass, <laughs> yeah, fake-ass anarchist. Basically. He's like, you're making me argue for anarchy. And you're the, the anarchist guy with yeah. the anarchist book. Making me own a gun. I thought you're an anarchist. I am. Nah! <laughs> being, it's even it, if I disagree with you about uh, classifying something. If they made you join an anarchist collective to have a gun, and you willfully joined it as part of a membership. This has nothing to do with anarchism. I don't explain to you. Yeah, it does. What do you Absolutely mean? Absolutely, has everything to do with anarchism. <laughs> Any gun ownership or mandating health insurance is. You're saying it's okay for an out a, a state to force you to own a gun, basically to be 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 force you to be a soldier for their. Racket, basically. Yeah. I'm an anarchist. The point being, it's even it, it, if I disagree with you, I'm a form of indentured servitude. Well, hold on, I don't know. Owning a gun is of indentured servitude. No, if you make somebody own a gun, that's indentured servitude. It's, who are you a servant? Who are you in servitude to? Who? Who's making me own a gun? I thought you're an anarchist. I am an anarchist. The point being, it's <laughs> even it, it, if I disagree with you about classifying. But you made you join an anarchist collective to have a gun, and you willfully joined it as part of a membership. This has nothing to do with anarchism. I don't explain to me how mandating gun ownership or mandating health insurance is indentured servitude. Uh, I mean, now you're for forced inoculations? You didn't answer my question. No, I'm, I'm, not for, I'm not for anything. I'm not for forced insurance, and I'm not for forced gun ownership. I, I'm, I'm mad at you, Michael. I'm just telling you. I just don't understand. <laughs> Can you pl Maybe this is oh, my oh, autism speaking. Oh, Can you? Yeah, it is. It is your autism speaking. <laughs> you're obviously having some sort of dyslexic fit right now because explain to me how mandating someone owning even Tim's like I'm not helping you out of this one yeah. <laughs> is indentured servitude as opposed to unlawful uh, all I know is under my common sense freedom and under what I want, I don't have to own a gun. Okay, okay, all right, wait, wait. Let's, let's okay, not go in I, circles. Let's not go in circles. Okay. He's like, yeah, he's like, I'm gonna. <laughs> he was just using the phrase. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. okay. I okay. think, I think no. the point is like, <laughs> I, I remember uh, when, when I think it was Illinois mandated seatbelts. I don't know when they exactly mandated seatbelts, but I remember having a conversation yes. about, do you have the right to not wear a seatbelt? Well, not anymore. You don't. And then I had a conversation from there about how you're forced. I remember when Obamacare was coming through, and people were like, what about auto insurance? The, law, the government makes you buy auto insurance. No one cares about that. And I was like, actually, I, I kind of do. I, yeah. You know, I, I, like I, 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 of course, would always want to carry insurance, but and that's on a state level as well. The idea that the government would mandate you buy a private product and, and, and then regulate that product to, like, guarantee and your And now money. they use it as an example. Oh, you got to buy insurance. you got to wear a seatbelt, so you got to take a shot. I say... 
I'm more of an anarchist than malice, I guess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for, for oh. You and Blair, right? Listen, you're no Santa Claus. I'm not sitting on that lap. Yeah, he is. <laughs> so, 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 so we're playing who can anarchist out, out the anarchists? My book's right behind you. Yeah, yeah by a bunch of non-anarchists. Yeah. Anarchistsandbook.com. No, no, I watch your show. I watch Dan's show. I know you're intellectual. I'm actually genuinely smart. I respect you. So we're gonna do so. We're gonna watch some more of Malice's stuff since he's such an outspoken anarchist yeah. and see if he really is, or if he's really a, a good spokesperson for anarchists. Um, I doubt he is. I agree with anarchists, but we'll see. Precepts, but informing that and injecting that into the real world does not work. The, I disagree. You know, until it's scalable, yeah. until it's been proven. It's complete. Yeah. Anarchism isn't a location, it's a relationship. So this show right now is an example of anarchism. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's a lot more anarchism than we know. Centralization is when we have government, when we have fat cat bureaucrat mafiosos coming in and saying, I want to cut of that. It's centralization. Decentralization is anarchy in and my I'm opinion. For decentralization. Exactly. So right. I'm so you're for anarchy, and I'm for anarchy because that's the true definition of it with no one intervening, no one forcing you to do something. <clears throat> that's the basic it's core concept say, philosophies of anarchy, say, which should be that. respected and talked about properly. And that's why I had to correct Joe Rogan when he said this was anarchy. No, it wasn't. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably some of the best shit spoken on this podcast was this Luke correcting Joe yeah, on that because it shit's so annoying. I, I, I yeah. And the fact that Joe doesn't get that is just sponsor terrorism. Alex seconds. knows about that. Give me thirty seconds. We'll show for ten minutes. I promise. That's I don't believe that. Yeah. See, see how excited Luke gets when he knows that libertarians are going to be stoked about something he did. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> because that's his core group. Yeah. And those are Absolutely. and those are the people that told him to go fuck himself once he went all corporate. So he he was just all dancing because he's like, ooh, all the anarchists are going to love me for saying that shit. I yeah. fucking corrected Joe Rogan. You can yeah. see him dancing in his chair. Giddy. Yeah. That is a lie. You're a liar. <laughs> that is not true. You're a liar. Centralization. Permit? Well, yeah. yeah. Definitely. There's, yeah. there's a lot more anarchism than we know. Centralization is when we have government, when we have fat cat bureaucrat mafiosos coming in and saying, I want to cut of that. It's centralization. Decentralization is anarchy in yes, my opinion. just trying to wrap. Exactly. So I'm... So you're for anarchy, and I'm for anarchy, because that's the true definition of it, with no one intervening, no one forcing you to do something. That's the basic it, core concept say, philosophies of anarchy. The fact that 1.6 million people just heard that is pretty dope. Be respected and talked about properly, and that's why I had to correct Joe Rogan when he said, this was anarchy. No, it wasn't. I, 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 I'm the yeah. state sponsor terrorism. Alex seconds. knows about that. Give me 30 seconds, we'll show for 10 minutes. I, that's a I don't believe that. You're that is a lie. lie. <laughs> that is not true. You're a liar. 30 seconds. I would, I would like to give everybody every lie detector get a time. just Exploded. Get a timer right now. Yeah. Just mute his mic. Linda, just mute his mic for 10 minutes. No. Get, no, no, get no. Get your no. timer ready. Yeah. I want you to hear this. Ready? Yes. Oh, shut up. I actually love everybody in this room. I know you all, and I really appreciate the producer to everybody. And I, this has just been historic, and Joe is so amazing, and all you guys, and Tim, thank you for having me here. You're right, it is real anarchy, and it's beautiful, and I love you all, and I appreciate being here. But Joe Rogan coming from his massive, amazing, new Austin studio to my trail on the but side the of the Joe's road. Joe's not yeah. elitist. He loves you, Tim. No, I know. I'm just talking about it. You know, he I'm always right. loved you, but after you destroyed Twitter with him, he, like, puts you at the top tier. You know what's funny, mm. though, that we had beef. You got, you I didn't know that. Tell oh, this story. Yeah, for yeah, dinner? Story. So this fall. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait. No, no, I have pork. Yeah. pork. Well, uh, so, so, um, the more, the more you study Joe Rogan and his mannerisms and his behaviors, the more he looks like just a giant piece of shit. <laughs> like, there's a lot of stuff, like. It's not too complicated. Joe, uh, someone back in like during Occupy era, somebody tweeted at Joe when, when his podcast wasn't as big. They were like, "You got to have Tim Pool on the show," and then he tweeted at me like, "Yeah, for sure, man. Why don't you come and hang out?" And I said, "Cool." So, you know, I was young and, and bright eyed and naive, and mm-hmm. I was kind of like, "This is Joe Rogan." This is back in 2011, mind you. So, not the biggest show in the world. So, I flew to LA, and once I landed, he messaged me like, "Bro, I'm really sorry to do this to you. I can't have you on the show." Something came up, and I went. Ah. I just flew out to California. And so I made the best of it. There's some protests I covered. A year later, same thing happened. Somebody tweets at Joe, like, how come you never had Tim Pool on your show? Now it's 2012. And he was like, yo, we tried to make it happen. It didn't happen. Tim, what do you say? Come on the show. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let's do it. This time, I was like, I want to I want to make sure we we, we confirm this. Like, because he gave me the details before. I'm like, give me the details, give me the time, give me everything. And he does. And so I get on a plane, I pay for it myself, because I'm young and naive, and I fly Mm -hmm. to California, and then he says, bro. 
I'm so sorry oh to do this to you. I can't have you on. Oh the my show. god! Some <laughs> things come up, <laughs> and I was just twice. like, all right, now I'm really mad. And I was like, dude, are you kidding me? It's like a year later, you do the same thing. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I was like, look, I'm obviously mad about it, but Joe doesn't owe me any favors. Me going on his show would be really great for me. So I was just like, that's the story. And then what ended up happening, I was like, I. I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna be mad about it because he doesn't owe me anything, and I'm just gonna. I'm gonna focus on my thing. I'm not gonna beg him. I'm not gonna ask him. And I just went about my business. And then a couple of years later, Joseph mess messaged me, and he was like, "Bro, I just want to let you know, like, I am really sorry about you know having canceled on you like that." And now it's beautiful. I, I don't want there to be any beef or anything. And I was like, "Nah, dude. There's no. There's no salt. There's no beef. Like, it was just like it happened twice in in in, in the span but, of. But a let year. me tell you about Joe in the old days. He was doing so much comedy almost every day, and his other jobs. He we were going to do his podcast forever, and he would cancel it, too. He just used to, like, the podcast was a side thing. And then starting about six years ago, he made it the main thing, and that's what happened. Blair, okay, was there I don't feel as bad now because there was two times where Joe invited me on, and it didn't happen. I didn't fly out. but um, And then I just checked my phone before he we went on. I have a missed DM from him from two weeks ago asking me to come on. I'm like, why am I? Now it's my fault. Yeah, he knew who you were. He's like, oh, hi, Blair. And I was like, well, why aren't you on the show? Now, here's the, here's the crazy story. Joe's a sweetheart, fault. though, man. Here's, here's the crazy story you about... You should have seen us taking ass in Vegas. The, the you want to hear the Twitter story? Can we so hear about that story? I would love that story. You guys want to hear the Twitter story? Because I don't got to... I, I, I want to hear the acid story. You're like, right, well, acid like story. no, that's a story. Acid story, story with story. Alex. Yeah, start going. You want to hear it later? I'll tell you later. No, 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 no. no. I, I'd love to hear it Well, <laughs> can we? Is it, is it, is it, is it something where you're like... He loves gossip. Maybe that's yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> tell, or are you going to now spill well, the beans? The question is, which story should it be? Yeah. Mm. The wild one. The crazy <laughs> which, one. So when you're... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh before that. A few times, I don't remember with me, Joe, and Joey Diaz. I just remember, like, uh, actually, you get Joe on next time, he'll tell you. But, I mean, I remember, like, two days later, because I was not a big, you know, two days later, like, not knowing where I've been, like, in Vegas with him. Because he, like, if you, I went out and saw some of the fights in Vegas and other places with Joey. He'd buy me, get me tickets. He was a great guy. And so I remember, like, Okay, we're at ESPN and we're on air and this is going on. I'm in a control room and Joe is whatever. And like two days later, I'm like, what What happened? Joe's like, I'll be later. Like... So it was pretty well. <laughs> pretty well. But Joe's not like that now. He, he, but he's definitely done some partying. Yeah. I mean, let me tell you, I've sat there with Joe. Because now we go out, he might drink like two beers. And he got in great shape, everything. But I remember, like, I mean, like like two days up with him, and he wasn't on any type of amphetamines. It was all just Joe's energy, mm -hmm. and we're like drinking like twenty shots at like four a.m. up for two days, and like taking edibles and all this. I mean, this dude's like a thoroughbred. <laughs> I mean, a thoroughbred man. That's why he takes the horse paste. Uh, yeah, that's why he takes the horse paste. <laughs> so uh, no, but Joey Diaz once like we're sitting there, Joe's like, eat these, eat these edibles, and Joe's like, ha ha, we just took acid. And I don't remember two days. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, like, Joe, any, any revelations, any reality shattering moments, any kind of like clarity in your life through the Part of it was fun, except I remember, and this is to Joe's credit, this is like 15 years ago, six, 17 years ago. This big, we're in Vegas. We're there two days before the fight, like a day after the fight. So we're there like four days. So two days before, one day of the fight, day after. And I just remember, I'm like, why don't you take the, the elevator to your limo? He loved his fans so much that I remember like hallucinating on acid while Joe signed thousands of autographs. <laughs> I'm trying to go through the casino once yeah, they yeah. start piling up, and I remember just like day like like hallucinating <laughs> for like a day of him signing autographs. Oh, really like cool. like like it's like it is crazy. Wow. You know, well, yeah. the, the, See, there's like some cool story like naked chicks and stuff. It's not. It's no. Joe. <laughs> yeah, but that's not cool. That's not the cool stuff. It's, the cool it's, stuff is the deeper Joe stuff. It's Joe taking photos. Yeah. Selfies with people yeah. and signing autographs. Being selfless. One of selfless. Yeah. So, so. They're talking about Joe, how Joe's changed over the years. This was kind of interesting. Say, there's two things here. For one, like Joe really started to understand and see what was going on as things got worse, but it's also that things are getting worse. I want to make sure I preface that by saying... And he moved to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> so he's surrounded by conservatives. Freedom, loving individuals, liberty-minded individuals are winning many battles across the board. But in the censorship stuff, as this becomes the new corporate press, it is getting worse. And, I mean, I think the reality is we're not long for this world, you know? Mm. Everyone's like, you know, I see the comments like, wow, Tim, you really pulled this, this thing together. And I'm like, yeah, but... There will come a time. The cliffs are eroding, and over time, they are homogenizing what YouTube is, 
and they want it to be that mainstream right. narrative. Yeah. Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, but but they know that. Eventually, this, yeah. the sand dumps in the sea. But, the, but, but let me just say this one thing, because <laughs> I don't bullshit when it comes to things like this. Tim was a turning point for Joe, and I'm not thinking our private phone calls and things, because Joe wanted to believe in the system and wanted to believe there were good guys right. and bad guys. And when he, he, he remembered him, I'm not going to tell the whole story, but he called him, he goes, you see what happened with Tim Bolden? I said, yeah, I heard about it. thank you. I'm, I retired. He goes, well, it, it's true. Joe already had all that understanding, but as soon as, so it's true, Tim, that like, you're like the vampire that bit Joe Rogan. And we'll, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know about that. Just, yeah. <laughs> that was the point. I told you that yeah. privately. That was the point. But, but, and, and then they were like, uh, they didn't know what they were doing. So again, uh, another thing. Toto and yeah, the, yeah, and the calm down. Yeah, and, and something else to add here, you're saying we're not long for this. And actually, I would tell you that. <laughs> there was a black helicopter chasing down the street. Uh, man, yeah. Well, we had a hawk attack on our chickens. <clears throat> a they black all, hawk. It was. It was. Well, I mean, it was a, the hawk was black. I don't know. That's I don't know what happened. The black hawk flew over yeah. and the chickens all Simple, ran. Simple, you are why did chicken, Why did the chicken cross the road? Oh, probably because they weren't looking to scratch some dirt and get some Alex, at what rest. point would you start red pilling your kids, or do you? Well, that's the problem. I've, I've, I've left my children alone. Mm -hmm. And I've got four children, so one's like 19, one's 17, one's 13, one's four. But I always think of my child as the, the youngest one, and, and I'm like, that's why I feel guilty. So like, she knows how to run, like, I don't know how to turn the TV on, so I don't watch a lot of it. It's like all these, she says, I want to put music on, I want my blah, blah, blah. She's like, meh, meh, meh. and all of a sudden, Sanjay Gupta, and I'm like, grilling a steak. I'm like, huh? And I'm like, greedily eating it. I'm like, huh? And then like, Gupta's, do, so I go turn it off. She's like, I'm telling you, my daughter is, is like like a demon conjuring Sanjay Gupta. <laughs> so this happened like five days ago, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, like no me. laughs? Not like, me. like at least he's like smiling. Like, like an adult, like God. this is what the world is doing. You know, I, I, don't, I don't want to say I respect my children, I do. But it's weird, I, it's like I can't like tell a four year old how things work. Mm. They right. see it, so I'm just like, we're turning Sanjay off now. And she's throwing a fit and she doesn't know why. You know what? But like, yeah. why is the dude telling my daughter? Alex, do you know what you do next time? I got to turn this off. This is this is scary. That's what you tell her. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. scary. Well, children are a lot more yeah, conscious. Lie a lot more aware. Lie to your kids, idiot. A lot more DMT. <laughs> a so GIF that goes year by year in terms we of... It just like last week. Oh, perfect. Yeah, we were looking at where, it. Where it goes from no one has gun licenses to... Sh um, may issue to shall issue to not even having a license and then state by state it overwhelmingly okay, changed so oh, Alex let me please let me finish I said you've been talking to continually you said 10 minutes Alex this is the gift a lot of those this middle states exactly and the other thing is this is the model that's going to happen what's going to save America is when this happens with regards to education as the money goes to funding students instead of funding systems, and you get kids out of government schools, which are literal prisons for That's children, true. and the only place many people experience violence in their lifetimes, the cathedral is compete. ruined. Yeah. Because all you need is 10% of the population to realize that this is all a lie. Just yeah. look at this map and watch as all of the shall issues turn green, which is constitutional carry, unrestricted right to bear arms. Can you explain what the colors are? It might be hard to read. Yeah, so this is by, so it's good. what he said makes a lot of sense and it's old, old libertarian rhetoric, but if you, to, to fix the school system, you have to make the schools compete for students instead of just lining students up and funding the schools you need to fund the stu the kids so they can take their money to whatever school they want to go to therefore bad schools disappear good schools take over uh, where bad schools failed instead of now where you just have bad schools across the board we're going to start over in a second in 1986 no issue, meaning these states, all the states oh, that are in red, which is a large face. amount, sorry, will Steve. not give you concealed carry. Watch they in the green. yellow ones, they might. The blue ones, as they're now expanding, are, are ordered, they must give you a concealed carry if you apply. You can see here, this is, I think, this is Vermont, right? That's an unrestricted, Alaska, unrestricted. Now, starting around the mid-2000s, the late 2000s, we start seeing the rise, okay, 2010, constitutional carry starts. States are now enforce, uh, 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 enacting laws that say you don't need a permit, you don't need to apply. The Constitution says you have a right to keep and bear arms. Texas just got this. This is crazy. Texas actually you take a, a license, you get an exam and a handgun license. Now in Texas, it's constitutional carry. Freedom is, 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 is winning. a chain reaction. Yeah. It could yes. be a coincidence that a bunch of those red states in the middle are now green. A bunch of the no issues are now unrestricted. That's crazy, right. yeah. isn't it? Colorado too, yeah. Southern states said, we will not give you a concealed carry permit. Now they're like, 
You can walk, you can do whatever you want. We're not even gonna ask you. Now, Freedom is contagious. It, it should also. I think the chart is also going to be the same way when it comes to homeschooling because we're seeing yes. a huge rise of people saying this indoctrination center, this Rockefeller created education center, is something that's destroying my child's flame. My child's life is being destroyed by this indoctrination, by this hate. And by the way, look. The beginning. By the way, look. It's almost over the top what they're trying to cause a populist uprising. Yes. Everything they're like, what is, it's so ridiculous. And here, so you think like a statewide um, school choice initiative is where the next, is the next step of oh, God, this shattering the mold? Sounds good. I think, Thank you, I think we need a national free state kind of yeah. thing. Yes. We need people at the local level to start voting only for their local candidates who agree with certain principles of free oh, liberty. Oh, yeah, is that how we're gonna I figure this out, Jeff? Yeah. Really? Voting locally? For liberals, conservatives, gay, straight, whatever, do you support the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, everybody's rights? Let's get past yeah. the label. Who's gonna be put, this is nonsense. <laughs> Who's going to be putting this litmus test into practice? They do if it. They, they do it in New Hampshire. New Hampshire has the highest amount of homeschoolers per capita than the entire the United States. They have some of the highest IQ. They have this. Uh, they have some Luke, of the highest not, machine uh, gun Luke, ownership. Stop! Stop! Yeah, this is not machine gun. Don't it. You're full of it. New Hampshire is. I've talked to gay people, straight people, black people, white people. That's They all want freedom. No, they don't. You're full of shit because you saw what happened to lockdowns. If they all wanted freedom, we wouldn't have the lockdown. That's a complete lie. Stop the lockdowns. What, what do you mean stop Florida, them? stop wait, the lockdowns. Yeah. Wait, no. Am I going hey, to why are you so pessimistic, man? I'm not <laughs> pessimistic because I'm thinking if you think the salvation is going to be voting in the right people, you're completely no. delusional. Alex. Culturally fight at every Alex. level. He's been talking about this shit the whole time with these guys. So it doesn't make any sense. Lennings. The Engaging millions of lemmings in this country that bend the knee and to the global elite and to the constitution. And to, okay, they, so they bend the knee. What do we do? Yeah, the Republican yeah. in, the, in the Republic says, if 51% want to enslave me, they'll have a right on the... On uh, well, but if it's 85, it doesn't matter. I don't care how many pe how popular it is, my rights are not up for discussion, let alone a vote. And Luke, the reason uh, I was disagreeing with you is... I understand what he said. I, I am that because there's a war in our minds. The, uh, what I was disagreeing with you about, Luke, is New Hampshire is a self-selecting population. It's a very small population. You can't replicate the Free State Project on a nationwide level because there's a huge percent of the population, as you agree with, who does not view, do not not share values. Keto. I disagree because if you look at just autonomy, I don't care if it's a bunch of communists wanting to live in the woods. We, we have examples of this with the Amish. The Amish are living by their own set of rules, without government, yeah, without well. mandates, they're without well. vaccine mandates, and they're, and they're doing a lot better than a lot of other people. So if the Amish no, are doing it... No, COVID! No, yeah, it's not true. No, no, they are dealing with COVID, they're COVID. But, they, no. but they're having to have... No. Carol uh, Atkinson's did a great yeah. document game going and countering the changes to election law they're going around screaming at each other so about Tim's right. So engaged him in a reset war. I'm trying to get people to realize. Is there a website for that Alex? The corporation is creating resetwars.com. <laughs> reset. The point is it's the biggest thing I'm doing is going to last next month. It's huge but, but sir, I've changed the world a lot here so I'm not a BSer. This is big stuff. How do we get people aware of the global corporate structure? How they're mind controlling us? instead of just receiving the propaganda. We've got a big awakened population right now. How do we get them engaged? I would say build a decentralized parallel system, and I'll give it to you also. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll, say, right. I'll say it's do, do ridiculous things like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, hey, we're gonna do a really, really crazy show. Navigate the minefields to the best of your abilities <laughs> so you, they don't, you know, chop the tree down before it has a chance to bear fruit. And I will say, um, free state-like ideas, it's not perfect, but I think New Hampshire is doing something, something very, very powerful and positive. And I gotta tell you, if we're, gonna, if we're gonna have any victories, like what New Hampshire is doing is very interesting and it can be done in other states, a small, mi uh, a small minority of politically active individuals can over like look at the Mises Caucus. I know the Libertarian yeah. Party is not when very Dave big. Smith gets fifteen percent of the Democrat of the of the polling numbers in two thousand twenty four, and I'm the press secretary for that That's campaign. Right. Getting 15% in the polls is not impossible. And then things are really going to get then, fun. And then what happens is you may be in the... So I looked this up. I guess Dave Smith mentioned something on JRE on Joe's podcast about possibly running for president or something, said something about it, but I had to look that one up. Minority, but most people will just vote for one or the other. And if you're the alternative to the corrupt machine where the right, people are ready to vote for a ham sandwich, you're there. So also, I want to say this. Here's, here's what I want to say. No. So right now, one of the things that bothers me the most, we had Steve Bannon on this show, and I think he's a very smart guy, 
and we, we did a members only segment where we, we talked about fraud and he's, he's adamant in his belief and I said, take a look at uh, universal mail-in voting. Take a, this, this is why I believe there is no fraud and I believe it's a red herring that has manipulated the populists into totally losing their standing and grounding and their ability to, to win these, these battles. Because you have, in what, a Democrat voted? city, one, look yeah. at New York, you get one housing complex with 500 units. They all get five universal mail-in ballots for the five people who live there, mom, dad, and their 2.5 kids. The Democrat sends one activist to go door to door and hits 500 families times five votes each, and they can do that in a couple days, just knocking on doors as they make their way, and they say this, did you vote yet? Your ballot is right there, fill it out. out. He's, he's saying that these... Democrat people that come out to the buildings are just simply going to convince everyone to vote Democrat when that's not at all how it would turn out realistically. Oh, wait. That's a, not a very good argument. Republicans have to go to rural areas where they drive mm. through suburbs and they can hit five what? houses on one block and they can get ten houses in a day. And the Republicans should focus on cities. Republicans yeah. should focus on the rural changes that heavily advantage urban dense centers. The Republicans Yawn. should focus on the rule changes that Status disadvantaged bullshit. Republicans. Like, Change come on, the anarchists, speak up. Yeah. Speak Still up, anarchists. Anarchist. Not the left shadow. All Let's see how long it's going to take. Rigged by <sighs> I hope the populace <sighs> got wrapped up in a fraud narrative yep. that stopped them from. There's a whole book about this. There's a whole book about. No, let me just say one sentence, Alex. I've been behind One sentence. There's a whole book about this called "Rigged" by Molly Hemingway. I know you had Mark on the show too. Like, if you're an anarchist. A real anarchist? You don't give a Why shit about engaging? these politicians. Like, they aren't the people in power. They aren't the ones controlling us. So, it's it's a little funny. I don't know. Uh, when we watched it the first way through, he at least four or five times calls himself an anarchist. Yeah. Um, I don't think we've seen it in this video because we've cut through it, but... It's a little silly. Yeah. Alex, I think being happy, healthy, and prepared for whatever comes next is the solution, is the real resistance. Yes. And, and there's going to be a lot of turmoil, especially economically, hitting this country. As soon as COVID happened, I was like, this is not going to be about COVID. This is going to be about the economy. And we're seeing the, the start of this. This is only the beginning of this. And I think we're really headed for hard times. And I think the way to resist this is by having family, is by having a network, is by having a cohesive group together that is ready for whatever happens. If you're unprepared, you're weighing down your family, you're weighing down your neighborhood, you're weighing down your community. So right now, more than ever, smarten up, look at the situation that's happening in front of you, and make sure that you are ready for whatever's to come, because it's going to go, it's going to be a very bumpy ride. I to totally situation. agree with that. Yeah. We should just transcend all the arguments and realize this is a global engineered collapse. Yes, it is. Here's a very, very important question. Um, Maddie Matt, Matt says, Tim, who's the smoking hot babe with the sultry voice sitting next to Blair? Michael Mal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sitting next to Blair. I love it. This is my wife right here. <laughs> oh my God. Already? <laughs> this uh, lady's uh, trans conservative blogger, I guess. So she's like another Milo type. Of uh, character, conservative character, yeah. yeah. I'm expecting. Are you gonna uh -huh. take his name, Blair? <laughs> what? Blair Jones. Blair Jones. Blair go Jones. Blair Jones. Go ahead and elbow me right here, sir. <laughs> so I don't know. It was. Uh, I guess it was slightly entertaining. Slightly entertaining, not super surprising. I mean, just a lot of, like I said, just like statist rhetoric with, you know. A lot of anarchist rhetoric, too, which is cool. And it yeah. seemed like it was nothing negative about anarchists. It was almost like everybody Other was. Than Joe. <laughs> yeah, everybody was kind of like. Sticking up looking, for that. Yeah, looking at it as some place we can all get to someday or something like that. Yeah, and Alex or Jones. Being, yeah. Coming, he's like, I'm more of an anarchist than you are, yeah, Michael Mouse. That was Mouse. pretty funny. Yeah, that was pretty good. But, uh, yeah, we'll probably keep our eye on this Michael Malice guy. He's on um, Compound Media. Yeah, and he, I guess, just re re released uh, this book. Yeah. Anarchist, what do you say? Anarchist, uh, I want to call it anarchist, anarchist cookbook. No, uh, some... Handbook? Handbook. Yeah. Anarchist handbook, something. So he's trying to put himself out there as a face of the, that movement, so... Yeah, and if he's not, we're going to have to troll him. Yeah, we might need to troll Mr. Malice a little bit. We'll see. We'll, we'll check his stuff out. Yeah. Well, we'll see you guys later. Peace.